Hey guys, what's going on? This is Hunter Starcraft, and I'm excited to be bringing you guys more content. I'm excited to be back in the casting game. I've taken a brief hiatus over the past month or so, finishing up university, writing my final exams, uh, packing my apartment and moving, and just you know getting you know set up here in Toronto again. I finally have you know my computer and desk and everything uh, that I need set up, ready to go, ready to cast. And I mean, it's Monday and I'm looking to make this sort of a full time thing. I'm looking to do this Monday to Friday and get at least at least one video up every day. Ideally, you know, two or three and eventually maybe more uh, videos up every day. So I'm, I'm excited to take this to the next level and I'm uh, excited to do this with you guys. So thanks for tuning in. I wanted to just make that quick announcement and I did want to go over these patch notes that were recently updated. This is the... Um, uh, revision to patch 1.3.3 that's now live on the public test realm and should actually be live on the StarCraft ladder and like on Battle.net this week. Um, I'm thinking the Thursday or Friday um, or so I've heard. So I want to go over these patch changes with you. These patch changes just change so much about the game dynamic and how match outs, match, match ups play out. And it's just important to, to stay on top of this stuff. So the Protoss balance changes. The Archon has been adjusted a lot. It's now a massive unit. The Archon's range has also been increased from 2 to 3. So what is this going to mean? This is, I think, mostly going to affect Protoss versus Terran and Protoss versus Protoss. Massive units, I should just outline the properties of massive units. You can... Some units actually do bonus damage to massive units, like the Void Ray. I believe that's the only unit that does bonus to massive. But more significantly, massive units can't be stunned. So the Marauder Concussive Shell Upgrade does not work on Archons in this latest patch, which really affects PVT. It's going to make Archons effective at closing that gap between the Protoss Death Ball and the Marine Marauder Medivac Ball. It's also going to allow them to retreat more easily because, I mean, there's nothing sadder than seeing an Archon attempt to escape one Marauder or you can see one Marauder kite uh, an Archon all day because of the concussive shells. That's no longer going to be an issue. Archons are going to be, you know, a little bit more beastly the way they were in StarCraft Brood War now being massive units and with a range increase as well and that's very significant range as well I mean going from two to three that's a 50 percent increase so that's I mean that's a lot that's pretty dramatic and especially against you know marine marauder because archons do bonus to biological units and they do a little bit of splash damage as well so in protoss versus terran I think we'll see archons popping up just a little bit more and I'm excited to see that um, I have to admit, Archon is just about my favorite unit in the game, so I'm really pleased to be seeing these adjustments. I think they've deserved to be a massive unit for a long time. The other matchup that um, Archon, this Archon buff is going to change would certainly be PvP, especially when you've got large gateway armies duking it out. If you have Archons incorporated into uh, your army in the mid game and late game, um, massive units crush force fields they can run right over them and the force fields just disappear so that is a pretty huge game changing uh tweak that will you know allow archons to open up holes and get their gateway units in and prevent your opponent from sectioning off your units with force fields as easily so i think uh in, in at least two out of the three matchups this should play a, a pretty huge role and uh, I think it's a much deserved buff so you know I don't have any problems with these particular changes the the second two changes for Protoss balance um, is a the first one's a nerf to the build time of warp gates now they're gonna be 160 instead of 140 and the gateway has been adjusted slightly in that sentries are now um, only 37 seconds to build so they come out just a little bit faster this pair of changes is really designed to adjust the Protoss versus Protoss matchup because up to this point, uh, PvP has really been riddled with four gates. You know, whether you're going to, you know, go for your pretty standard, aggressive, try to crush your opponent at the seven minute mark, four gate build, or, you know, a more economical four gate, your defensive four gate. There are lots of variations on it, but it still can be a little bit redundant just to see that build dominate so much in PvP. And Blizzard has addressed this with these patch changes. 
nerfing warp gate research time just a little bit and increasing the speed that sentries come out of regular gateways as well may inspire Protoss players just to stay on gateway tech just a little bit longer and as such it'll open up more builds in the early game. I should also note just on the side that um, once again these are revised patch notes before this revision took place the Zealot and the Stalker as well had buffed build times by five seconds and I think Blizzard realized that that would probably inspire too many you know proxy two gates chrono boost out zealots you know you've got zealots in your opponent's base before they have anything to defend against it and um, they didn't want that that sort of plagued the beta just a little bit and uh, they certainly didn't want that so these are the updated notes and i think they're quite reasonable i am very supportive of any changes that are going to introduce more diverse play so i'm i'm pretty pleased about those the only other adjustment to protoss is this pylon uh, power radius decrease so that's going to be a nerf as well for protest players but nothing too crazy it may make it a little bit more difficult to you know put a pile on in uh, in a position so that you can warp units in on your opponent's high ground you know you'll have to get vision of the high ground obviously you run a zealot or a stalker to the top of the ramp uh, warp in some zealots uh, on the high ground you can use them to harass the mineral line you can use them to help uh, bust up the ramp and um, this is just going to make that a little bit harder they might get picked off more often and, and they'll get spotted a little bit easier this pylon power radius adjustment would also affect your building placement the sim city in your main base so it may change the way protest players want to wall off may make it a little bit easier you know for example for uh, roaches to uh, bust a, a wall off they might be able to get shots off on the pylons more easily but like I mentioned before this isn't anything too crazy and I doubt um, people will have a huge problem with this particular change moving on to the Terran changes they have some interesting ones as well now the salvage uh, ability has been reduced in in effectiveness so bunkers as everyone knows the running joke was always you know bunkers are free keep your receipt and you can uh, you know get a full refund all your money back not the case anymore you'll only get 75 minerals back instead of a hundred so this is just gonna make uh, Terran players a little bit more cautious about when and where they put down uh, bunkers especially at the professional level because I mean we're talking about 25 minerals and for lots of uh, casual players that's not going to make much of a difference but for the pros this definitely does come into play we might see fewer instances where uh, fewer bunker rushes because bunker rushes I mean they're seemingly free you know you can put down a bunker if the bunker goes up you salvage it and um, you're really not that far behind even if your bunker rush doesn't do a lot of damage so Protoss or sorry Terran players might be a little bit more conservative about that uh, they and with defensive bunkers as well they're not just gonna put them down um, so freely the way they have um, you know for Starcraft 2 thus far they're gonna be a little bit more conservative the ghost change um, an, an adjustment to the cost ghosts now are gonna be 200 minerals 100 gas instead of 150 150 and this isn't a super dramatic change either you know it it is an adjustment that players are gonna make to their build orders to the point that you know say a say a Terran player is on three bases and they're you know going up against Protoss they're doing uh, you know the pretty standard Marine Marauder medevac lots of Terran players will then incorporate ghosts into their army and you know now they'll be saving a little bit of gas 50 gas per ghost which is pretty good for them especially because often Terran players have a um, a surplus in minerals because of course mules just beastly mining units um, so that's going to be good it'll really just come down to an adjustment of builds you know maybe off of three base they'll only be mining off of five gas instead of six gas or something like that but nothing too crazy I think the most interesting change for Terran is this Thor adjustment this goes back to the way the Thor was in the beta and the way the Thor was when the retail version first launched now Thors are gonna have energy once again and the strike cannons ability is gonna cost 150 energy instead of being on a cooldown so I mean the most uh, the, the matchup that's going to be affected most because of this change is definitely going to be Terran versus Protoss. And I say this because now Protoss are going to have the option to go for High Templar 
uh, much more often. I mean, obviously, before these changes and the way Battle.net is currently, High Templars are just about useless, completely useless against the Thor. But now that Thors have energy, High Templar, all of a sudden, you know, a very, a very useful unit. You can, you can use them to, I mean, the feedback ability, if you guys didn't know what I was referring to. Uh, High Templars have feedback. Feedback is going to turn any banked energy into damage against the unit. So if a Thor was built, you know, a couple of minutes ago and it banks its full 200 energy, you use feedback, which is a cheap ability for High Templar, you know, doesn't cost a lot of energy. You feedback a Thor, immediately its life is cut in half. It's pretty dramatic. And um, this is going to be good news for Protoss players. I'm sure that they're very pleased to see this cooldown is removed and Thors are back to using uh, energy uh, the way they did um, you know, some months ago. So this should make the Protoss versus Terran matchup more dynamic, and I'm very pleased to see that. A couple changes as well to Zerg. Nothing too crazy. The Infester move speed has been nerfed just a little bit. It has uh, dropped a quarter of a point down from 2.5 to 2.25. That is, is really not the end of the world. I mean, you don't usually inf uh, rely on Infestors um, to have, you know, crazy speed. Uh, it's good to have the speed bonus on creep, and often you can use infestors just to poke up sort of um, offensive fungal growths, if you will. Like if you were going up against Terran, you can uh, fungal growth your opponent's, you know, marine marauder ball, even as the ball is still near your opponent's base, like before they've really moved out. Um, so you can use infestors offensively uh, like that and just delay, delay, delay the Terran push, for example. So in that respect, this is a bit of a nerf and it kind of sucks for infestors, but there's benefits as well. Like if you just have, um, if you're using infestors as a component of your main army and you generally are keeping them uh, with the rest of your Zerg units, you know, in a big ball, Infestors are going to now, you know, be a little bit smarter because before, with 2.5 move speed, Infestors would move ahead of your ball. They would get sniped more easily because they're stuck out in front and they're so far ahead. Now, with a slightly decreased move speed, they're going to be where they belong, in the middle of the swarm uh, army or, or at the back as spellcasters, really where spellcasters belong. So, you know, in, in both of those respects, I think this is a pretty fair adjustment. I doubt there are going to be, you know, huge complaints about that either. The Spore Crawler has also been buffed. You can root Spore Crawlers now twice as fast, so that's pretty good. Spine Crawlers are still the same. Spine Crawlers are still going to be 12, uh, 12 seconds to root. This would be a way more dramatic change if they were adjusting the Spine Crawler, but it's not. It will allow you to get anti-air in position a little bit faster, but again, at the professional level, if you've placed your Spore Crawlers in a poor position to begin with, and you all of a sudden find that you're getting harassed, uh, you know, by any number of air units. I mean, you're kind of going to be screwed. You don't often have time to unroot, move, and then root back in before the damage has been done. So it does allow a little bit more leeway and maybe a, a slightly, um, you have slightly more time uh, to react, um, you know, versus your opponent's air units. But Again, nothing too crazy. Um, and actually, I should mention for detection as well, spore crawlers only detect when they're rooted. And of course, you know, you can root them six seconds faster. Uh, it might help save your butt from a, from a DT rush uh, now and then. But nothing too crazy. I really am a little bit more excited for the Thor changes and really all the Protoss changes. And once again, I read earlier today that these changes should go live um, on, you know, real Battle.net at the end of the week, you know, Thursday or Friday. So for the actual uh, retail game, not the public test realm. So that should be exciting. And uh, I'm excited to see how it will, uh, you know, affect all our favorite matches, especially in the pro scene. So pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think about these changes and how they're going to affect your matchups. Leave that in the comments below. I'm really wondering what you guys have to say about it. And I think that's all for this video. I'm going to be doing a little bit more casting today, so stay tuned for more. And yeah, thanks for watching. That's it for now. Peace out, guys.